Everybody. At least one person didn't. Yes, you mentioned on the phone the word murder. That's right, Dr. Bigby. Who killed her? A man we can't touch because he's already dead. Jason Prell. Well, he's done about everything else, I guess. I wouldn't put it past him. What do you base it on, Mr. Dollar? A bottle of pills. Prell supposedly went to Tupper's Lake last night and got a prescription filled for Mrs. Cronin. She took some of it this morning, an hour and a half before she died. There it is. I'd seen the bottle on the train coming up with a few tablets left on the same prescription. And these are different. Well, you're right on one count, Mr. Dollar. Those aren't what the prescription calls for. What do you mean, one count? I talked to the druggist at Tupper's Lake on the phone last night. He told me about Jason being in. All right, it still stands. He had the prescription filled and then changed the tablets, substituted these. It's possible. Would you happen to know what they are without having them analyzed? I've got a pretty good idea, but I'll wait until I've examined her before I'll say positively. Uh, Mr. Dollar, I'd like to explain why I wouldn't come out when you called me last night. Yeah, I wish you would. I'd been drinking. So I gathered. I'd been drinking that other time, too, and I'd made a mistake. I didn't want to make another one. Just what do you mean? When Barnaby Cronin died here, I signed the death certificate. Yes, I know. I hadn't treated him. He was dead when I came out. I called it a heart attack. I was drunk. And I was wrong. Barnaby was poisoned. Go on. I didn't suspect it until later. And then I was afraid to do anything about it. I'd signed that certificate, and I knew it would break me. So I kept still, and I consoled myself with drink. And finally, it broke me. So the same end result was achieved. Look, Dr. Bigby, if Barnaby Cronin was here alone, then how was he poisoned? Alone? He wasn't alone when he died. She was here with him. Mrs. Cronin? Of course not. Why do you think he was always making trips up here, always by himself? I didn't know he was. For years, every week or two, the whole village knew about it. She was here with him that night. She's the one who called me, asked me to protect her good name. She's the one who poisoned him. And now she's had another try with the same poison. But why? Ask her why. Ring for her and ask her. That won't be necessary. <clears throat> well, I'll go on up and make my examination. Well, Miss Atherton, I'm asking, why? He was planning to break off our relation. He told me that night. She'd finally won. That silly little fool had finally won. But I didn't let her win. I killed him. You're confessing to murder, you know. It doesn't matter now. I've accomplished everything I meant to accomplish. So it was you who changed the tablets in her prescription bottle and substituted the poison. Of course. It was so easy. For once in my life, things were just as easy for me as they'd always been for her. Will you have the sheriff come out, Mr. Dollar? I'd like to make my confession. <laughs> It's odd how things work out sometimes, Mr. Dollar. Yeah. Mrs. Cronin said something like that last night. I was pretty certain when you showed me the tablets, but I wanted to make my examination first. What do you mean? After Barnaby died and I started to suspect Miss Atherton, I managed to steal the poison from her in order to analyze it. I substituted harmless tablets of the same general appearance. And those are what she's kept all these years? What she gave to Mrs. Cronin? That's right. They were perfectly harmless. In that case... Dolly Cronin died from a heart condition. The tablets had nothing to do with it. In a sense, Dolly died the same way she lived. From natural causes. Expense account item 14, $83.90. Incidentals and transportation from Wells Falls back to Hartford. Expense account total, $263.30. End of account, end of report. Remarks? The insurance angle here seems a little muddy. Premiums were paid for years on an item that didn't exist. And yet, no claim was filed and none will be. So, well, I leave it to your legal eagles. Me, I'm beaten, and tired, and maybe a little sad. I've come out of this with a kind of nostalgia. And for a time and place I never even knew. 
And I'm halfway in love with a girl back in that time and place. A girl I've never seen. <laughs> oh, sure, I know. It's a dream world and a dream girl. And none of it exists. But it's too bad. I wish it did. Because she must have been a honey. A real sweetheart. A dancing darling. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, please, there'll be a new exciting story on Johnny Dollar beginning next Monday. Next week, the story of a man worth $50,000 who didn't have a cent to his name. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Virginia Gregg, Shirley Mitchell, Vivi Janis, Barbara Fuller, Benny Rubin, John Daner, and Parley Bear. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. Thank <laughs> you.